Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Phil and welcome to Expo Aviation. Today's trip report is our flight from Manchester to Las Vegas with Thomas Cook Airlines and Air Tanker International. We begin at Manchester Airport's Terminal 1 where Thomas Cook have a considerable presence. I had checked in online the day before, however as we fly into the United States we must use a separate queue to check in again where we're also given the third degree in questions relating to everything from our jobs to our intentions once stateside. With that out of the way, checking itself was pretty quick. Our flight will be departing from gate 26, which is located right at the end of Pier C. Some might call it rather dated, but I like to think of it as a more retro extension of Terminal 1. Many of my childhood holidays started here, including my first ever flight back in 1993 to Florida with Monarch. Pier C was due to be demolished as part of the redevelopment, but following cutbacks it looks like it's going to be retained after a refurbishment. Boarding started on time at 8.55 and was done from the rear working forward. With ourselves being located in the front cabin, this meant we'd be boarding last. Our aircraft today is a four-year-old Airbus A3 3200 GVYGK, operated for Thomas Cook Airlines by Air Tanker Services. This is one of two wide bodies operated by Air Tanker for Thomas Cook, and unlike its counterpart, this one has the full Thomas Cook cabin interior. There is no premium cabin on either of these two aircraft, with Kilo having a 320 economy seat cabin in a 242 configuration. Thomas Cook operates a weekly flight from Manchester to Vegas during the summer using their own metal. However, it's a weekly flight in winter, operated by Air Tanker. The seat pitch is 31 inches throughout, with a width of 18.2 inches, giving you more room than on the Thomas Cook short haul fleet. Mercifully, these seats don't recline, meaning that it actually feels quite spacious. The lack of recline was even more welcome when the couple on the row in front made a point of desperately trying to recline moments after takeoff. There was a complimentary bottle of water on our seats. We would also get a meal with a hot drink on this flight, however any further drinks and snacks are chargeable. We pushed back early but were held for 10 minutes due to ground traffic so ended up leaving on time. The crew utilised this extra time part up to make a lengthy duty free sales announcement and explain the difference between the two shopping magazines, which, to be fair, I don't think anyone knew that one is for pre-ordering for the return flight and the other is for what's actually on board. I know I certainly didn't. Departure gave us a good view of the centre of Manchester, as well as the surrounding areas of Stratford, Salford, Lee, Wigan, and I even spotted my house. We would head out on a pretty standard route in to just south of the Isle of Man, across Ireland, and out over the Atlantic before passing over Greenland, Canada, and the northernmost states of America.
cabin service began with the handing out of the complimentary headsets and the sale of upgrade codes for the in-flight entertainment. The headphones are a pod type, but they are fairly comfortable on a 10 hour flight and they do have a good sound quality. They also come in a branded bag which means they can be reused, which was a nice touch. The in-flight entertainment however was less than satisfactory. The seatback TV screens are a fair size and the touch sensitivity is excellent, though it can be a bit tricky navigating through the menus due to a lack of a scroll bar. The audio selection was excellent, with a choice of over 450 audio programs. The visual entertainment however was appalling. If you didn't upgrade, you had a choice of 4 movies, all of which were aimed at children, or 4 TV shows with an episode from each, and 2 of those were aimed at kids. If you paid £6 to upgrade your package, you had a choice of 64 movies or 149 episodes of various TV programmes. However, taking a look at the listings, I opted to read a book instead. I will review the upgraded entertainment package on our flight back, so check that video out. A quick mention though, if you're going to be travelling on the other air tanker operated A330, Golf Mike. This doesn't have seatback entertainment and instead uses Wi-Fi to stream to mobile devices, so bring a charger. To be fair to Thomas Cook, they did send me a letter a good two or three months earlier advising me that this flight would be on an ATI bird and that they do have a part on their website dedicated to the differences between their own aircraft and the individual air tanker fleet. Following on from the headsets, the drink service began, and despite us only being a couple of rows into the front cabin, it did take some time for the crew to reach us, be it a combination of being busy and slow in general. Thomas Cook have a pretty fair drink deal, with two cans of beer for £7.50, so we settled for a bud and got comfy. Prior to operating our flight, our aircraft had done a round trip to Orlando, and it kinda showed. Some of the literature was crumpled, with a safety card in a terrible state. I used the one from my partner's seat pocket here. One of my magazines was missing too, and the sit bag, but more disturbingly was the interesting smear on the bulkhead below my window, and some other things smudged onto the back of my tray table. The meal service was certainly different to how other airlines do it, with meal trays a thing of the past. The crew handed out a sort of lunchbox which contained all of the cold parts of the meal, the bread, cheese and crackers and pudding, as well as a cutlery pack and a carton of water, with the hot portion handed out separately. The meal itself was a choice of beef with dumplings, or masam and chicken curry with rice. I opted for the curry, which tasted pretty average. The chicken was rather dry, and the rice quite soggy, though I know from experience it is difficult to cook rice using the convection ovens fitted to the aircraft. Still, at least they tried to do something different with the economy meals. The dessert was a dark chocolate and mint mousse, and tasted really good. A hot drink was served to accompany the meal. I had tea in a cardboard cup. Boy, we certainly are a long way from premium economy in Virgin Atlantic. After the meal service had been completed, there was a second drink service. Following on from that, there was an advertised break for the cabin crew, and then the tax-free service began. As I mentioned earlier, the in-flight entertainment was pathetic, which for me isn't the end of the world, as I generally prefer looking outside. Unfortunately, for a good chunk of the flight it was overcast, but eventually, as we passed over Greenland, it started to clear up and give us some great views. The airshow moving map wasn't working on this flight for anyone, and had us stuck in Manchester for the duration, which was a real shame. The cabin crew didn't seem interested when this was mentioned, as they don't make any attempt to reset it. I think next time, I'll bring my maps, charts and Pooley's navigational plotter just in case. Due to our routing going quite far north, it had started to get darker, and with us heading westbound, this meant the sunset was actually chasing us for most of the flight across Greenland. Though of course, as we started to get deeper into Canada, it got brighter again. A small ice cream was handed out prior to the afternoon tea service. This was branded as the James Martin afternoon pack and consisted of two finger sandwiches, an egg crescent mayonnaise one and a cheese and onion one. There was also a bit of lemon drizzle cake and a small packet of pretzels.
Our descent started around 30 minutes before landing, and unlike the week before where the flight was routed in for landing on runway 1, giving those on the right hand side a great view of the Las Vegas Strip on its way in, we would be coming in on 26 left and routed over Lake Mead and the Colorado River. We actually landed around 45 minutes early, however we were held on the ground due to our gate being occupied, meaning we arrived on stand on time. Thomas Cook used the D gates in Terminal 1 at McCarran Airport, unlike their Condor of Germany counterpart which uses Terminal 3, so bear this in mind if you're planning onward travel. Summing up, I am generally pleased with the experience of my outbound flight with Thomas Cook Airlines and Air Tanker Services. I found the legroom suitable enough for my 5.11 stature and as the seats don't recline this prevented any issues caused by those who tried to achieve a business class life lap position in an economy seat. The meals provided were okay and the complimentary headphones were certainly appreciated. The cabin service however was very slow and I suspect this may be due to it being an air tanker aircraft with a different cabin configuration. The in-flight entertainment though was appalling. The selection of movies and TV programmes for a 10 hour flight was shocking and even if you upgrade for £6 you may still be hard pushed to find enough to watch that had last the duration of the flight. This was part of a package holiday and at the time of booking I could have actually gone with Virgin Holidays for the same price and stayed in a better hotel with the only caveat being the need to connect in Atlanta. I mention this just to put things into a bit of perspective as this certainly wasn't a cheap holiday and had it not meant going through Atlanta the weekend before Thanksgiving, I'd have definitely gone for the Virgin and Delta option. I am, however, a believer in you get what you pay for, and if I was to base my opinion on this one flight alone as a flight-only deal, then I would recommend Thomas Cook Airlines. That said, this was a trip of two halves, and based on my experiences on the return flight, I'd advise people to steer clear, so check back soon to see that review. I hope you enjoyed this trip report. I am trying to make these better so please let me know what you think I could improve on for future trips. I've got quite a few videos coming up from this Vegas trip including our landing and takeoff at Vegas complete with air traffic control audio so check back soon and as always thanks for watching.